Hi everyone, this is Marianne and welcome to my channel. Here I am again unboxing more of the Jinhao 82 translucent fountain pens that people seem to be going crazy over and for good reason. They are very nice looking pens that write quite decently. They don't dry out even if you don't use them for a few days. They don't skip. So far, they seem like very reliable pens, and they cost about 200 to 300 pesos only. Sometimes they even come with free shipping. I will link in the description box the online store where I purchased these. Although I do have to mention here at this point that there are so many colors of the translucent version and different online sellers have different names for them even though in the pictures they look very similar. Like for instance, one seller may list a color as coral pink and a different seller might list what looks like a very similar color and call it watermelon. So this is just something you might want to know before clicking the checkout button on these pens. Another thing to note is that these pens are very, very similar to the Sailor Pro Gear Slim Fountain Pens, which are so much more expensive because Sailor is a premium brand. But these Jinhao 82 Fountain Pens are not fakes. They do not pretend to be Sailor. They do not use the Sailor branding. They have their own name, the Jinhao name, engraved right here on the trim of each pen. So just a short explanation there in case some of you are wondering why these pens look familiar. These pens that I have just unboxed are the translucent yellow and the translucent pink. These two translucent pens don't come in the orange box that my first three translucent pens came in. I have unboxing and inking videos of those three pens which I will link down below. I also ordered from a different seller two more colors of the translucent pens and I ordered from that specific seller even though they are slightly more expensive because that seller had the option to have them in medium nibs and I opted for the medium nib. We can change the nibs on these pens by the way. A can write nib number 5 fits and it's easy to change but I didn't want to have to buy an entirely new nib so I opted to get the slightly more expensive pens already with the Jinhao medium nibs on them. These colors that I purchased with the medium nibs are the translucent white and the translucent orange. I will link the seller of these pens down below. The yellow and the pink had the option only for the fine and extra fine nibs and I always pick the fine. However, when I checked the nibs on the white and the orange, I saw that they were also fine nibs. I ordered them with the medium nibs so the seller clearly made a mistake. I went back to, the, to my order and saw that I specifically uh, clicked the medium nib option so I need to get these pens returned because if I wanted fine nibs, I could just have purchased them for a cheaper price from a different seller. So anyway, I am left with these two pens to play with, which brings to five the number of translucent fountain pens I already have. And like I said, I have unboxing and inking videos of these previous three pens, which I will link down below. These two pens uh, that I just received came with fine nibs like I said and the nibs are two-toned and the collar inside is also gold and the clip and trim on the pens is also gold. One fun feature of these pens is that aside from of course being able to swap the caps you can also swap the finials. The top just unscrews and the bottom can be pulled out. And you can do it for all of the Jinhao 82s, regardless if they are from the opaque line or from the translucent line. All of the Jinhao 82s are the exact same sizes. They have the exact same threads. I think they are formed from pretty much the same molds. People have been assembling their multicolor Jinhao 82s in so many different combinations. I think every combination looks so cute. You can even have four colors in one pen really because there are four parts in the external assembly five if you include the section but the section is hidden by the cap anyway but you can also swap out the section if you want 
I think it's so much fun, and it definitely adds to the appeal of these pens. But for now, I will keep them as I originally got them, like a single color for all of the parts. Now for the part that is getting increasingly challenging for me, deciding on an ink to put inside these pens. The Robert Oster Sushi, I think, is quite pretty, but I don't feel like it's a good match to the pink pen. Although I do have a new sample ink vial of Pilot Iroshizuku Momji, which I haven't swatched yet. But still, I wanted to go through the inks that I have already swatched. Robert Oster Dusky Pink looks like a good match to the pink now, I know I have said before that this color is too light, but I have a confession to make. I have done something to the nibs of these two new pens that would facilitate better ink flow and therefore allow them to write more wetly. And the process was quite fiddly, so I didn't film it. I had a lot of mistakes, but I promise, I promise I will make a video tutorial soon. So now, this time, I wanted to try again with Robert Oster Dusky Pink because I think it's pretty and maybe it will write darker. A day after I filmed this particular video, I filmed a different video and in that video, while I was filming it, I realized that this ink choice, the Dusky Pink, was a bit of a fail because because this ink actually already looks very similar to the Ferris wheel press Queen Aleum, which I am already using in an opaque pink Jinhao 82. Although the Queen Aleum has the shimmer and the dusky pink does not. But still, I prefer not to use inks that are too close to each other in color. I should have picked a different color with this one, but that's all right. That's all right. See, as you can see, the pen writes very, very wetly. And the ink does not look light at all. Sorry for the crowing rooster. It is about 7.30 in the morning. And I don't know whose rooster that is, actually. Now, I have only very little of the ink left in the vial. So I cannot fill the pen the usual way. The whole nib and a tiny part of the section has to be completely submerged in the ink. But there's not enough ink to do that. So I'm going to use these little contraptions that I ordered online for very cheap. I will share a link down below. And I got three of them, although I only really need one. But these are so cheap and it's nice to have a couple of spares. These are fountain pen syringes. They're basically converters with spring mechanisms with these blunt needles attached to them that you can remove for washing. These are made for the purpose of sucking in ink from a container and then transferring them to cartridges that have already been emptied but you want to reuse. People like using or reusing emptied cartridges and this is a tool that allows them to do that. Of course, we can also use a medical syringe, that the one that's used on people. It works the same way, but I am afraid of the super sharp needles on those. I am a very, very clumsy person, so I'm always worried about accidentally injecting myself with <laughs> fountain pen ink. These right here are certainly the much safer option and i just have this one pencil case lying around the house so i'm going to use it to store the syringes most converters have the same size opening so i am just going to transfer one of the needles into the jinhao converter that came with a pen and use this specific assembly to take in ink from the vial. This is also a very useful thing to have when you are using up all of your remaining few milliliters of inks, not just from the sample vials, but also from the glass bottles. Those are so tricky to completely empty out. And as you can see, there is still some amount of ink left in here that I can still load later on into this pen when there is more space in the converter for it. But for now, I have a full converter of ink, and I really, really like the ink. I like how it writes darker now. It's so much more legible than when I used it before. 
As for the translucent yellow, because I know this already writes very wetly because like I said, I already did the tweak on this nib, I wanted to load the Diamine Gold Star. It is really, really golden. The base color is a golden yellow and there is a lot of golden metallic shimmer in the ink. So to completely show off the ink and enjoy it completely, a wet writing pen is necessary. And I first dipped the nib into the ink and then I realized that there is still some blue ink left in the pen from when I tried to um, tweak it. I might have not rinsed it out completely. But after rinsing out the pen a second time, the ink came out so much more yellow and this is the true color of the Diamine Gold Star without the blue ink mixed in and it looks really really nice. And as you can see, this pen is really a very wet writer. Yellow inks are of course quite light, but when you use them in pens with broad nibs or with nibs that write very wet, the yellow becomes very, very readable. I think this ink is a really nice match to the pen. As for this translucent pen with a dusky pink ink, it also looks very nice. And of course, the final step would be to log in these pen and ink combinations in my tracking sheet for found pens and inks in use, which is in my life notebook. I have a video about how I made this life notebook and, I, and how I have expanded it, and I will link those videos in the description box. I am super happy with what I have chosen. I am actually not yet completely recovered from my illness, although I have already pretty much gotten back to my usual productive activities. But some days are harder to get through than others, and having these pens that I can use with my ink sample vials, with none of them costing anything much, is making me happy and helping me get through the day today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye.